Hi everyone, um, I've been doing some work with PayPal subscriptions over the last couple of days and I just wanted to post some information about what I've learnt around the different types of accounts there are, the different capabilities that those accounts have and um, just kind of cover up some of the terminology which you'll come across if you're looking into this and looking into building uh, subscriptions into your website. Um, because there, there is a lot of information around and it is a little overwhelming if you're coming at it for the first time. So hopefully this will help clear some of that up. So the first thing is to make sure that you have the correct account for the business type that you are going to be um, building this into. There are different. There are lots of different accounts with PayPal. You've got Website Payments Standard, uh, Website Payments Pro, and then the, there are loads of different gateways that are available, um, and they all have different capabilities and uh, kind of uh, different business needs because not every business needs to have um, the full-blown integration. Some businesses are okay just to have a simple button which you you drop into the site. So um, it's best to choose the, the correct account. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to a video in the description which just it's a, from a developer conference which happened a couple of years ago and um, the guys just explain uh, the different they, 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 they're just talking about the different types of uh, subscription models that there are and they go through a couple of use cases um, and also the different types of accounts that are available and uh, just an overview of um, the what's available uh, from a developer perspective to those different accounts. The next thing, um, just to quickly cover, is the uh, the different types of integration methods that there are with PayPal. So you'll probably, if, if you're coming at this and you're kind of looking, what's the API, you'll probably see that you have IPN, PDT, and the PayPal API. So the, what, I, and what I've seen a lot of people ask is, which one should I use? Um, and it's not so much a case of which one, it's probably more a case of uh, which combination should I use, because they're not really um, they're not really mutually exclusive. They're more they're, they're more just different. Um, they're more things that happen at a different time. So let's just go through those. You have the IPN, which is instant payment notifications, and what that is is a system which PayPal uses to send messages to your server. Um, so you you need to create a listener, um, just a listener script on your on your on your website. Um, you give that address to PayPal. And every time an event happens in the background, PayPal will send a message to your system uh, just to update what has happened. So um, if you have subscriptions running, every time a subscription payment is taken or fails uh, or someone cancels a subscription from PayPal, um, PayPal will send a message to your system uh, just notifying that that has occurred. And then you can update the account um, appropriately. The next thing is PDT, and that's Payment Data Transfer. And what that is, is a system which is used, um, if, you, if you have uh, the button on your website, a subscribe button or a, a payment button, you pass the user to PayPal, um, they fill in their details or add a credit card, and then when, they're, when they've paid for the service, they're passed back to your website, and PayPal passes them back to your website with a set of variables which you can then use to display on a, on a confirmation page. Uh, and that's normally, they're, they're kind of similar details to the IPN, so a similar set of variables, but they just happen, they happen at the time that the user is passed back to your website. So, um, and that will contain whether the payment was successful, um, how much the payment was, again, same sort of details. Um, so the idea is probably more using a combination of both of those. So just for an example, you, if you had a subscribe button, you pass the user to PayPal, uh, they subscribe to your service and then they're passed back. The PDT would pass a message back saying that the uh, the payment was successful, um, and you would also receive as well an IPN of a similar, pretty much the same message, um, just well the same thing. But you'd you would re receive additional messages as well in the future as more events occur. Um, the other thing to note about IPN is it's not instant. It can happen you know, from seconds to minutes after um, the actual payment has occurred. So it's you need to kind of implement that carefully and make sure um, that you're you're checking uh, you're checking that things have happened in the background uh, because 
for exa another example, when you when someone signs up as a, in a subscription to your website, uh, you will receive two IPNs, one to say they've signed up and one to say that the payment has been received, the first payment. So, and, and they sometimes, they, they kind of come in at different, sometimes the payment one comes first, sometimes it comes second. So it's a bit kind of hit and miss with that, but they are they are reliable. Um, but that's how that works anyway. And if you if you do some experimenting on the sandbox, you'll see um, how IPN works. It's, it's a good system. Uh, the next thing is the PayPal API, which is um, just a, a kind of... Uh, a really good interface to push changes to PayPal um, and retrieve information just like any other uh, any other API would work so uh, for example if you wanted to cancel someone's subscription um, you've got the subscriber ID which you've, you've taken uh, which was passed to you from the PDT message and will be updated by uh, future IPN messages um, you can then cancel that subscription by sending the request through PayPal's API um, and there are lots of different things that you can do with the API uh, so it's just a case of uh, having a look through the documentation there so so there you go you can kind of see that there are three systems you don't have to make a choice which one do you use you'll probably use a combination of two or three of those um, and they they work in a very similar way um, the information is is pretty much the same it's just they the events occur at different times um, and uh, that's about it really so i hope i hope it's been helpful i hope this can it gives you a good place to start um there's lots of reading to do um but those are the those are the three main systems that you'll use to build subscriptions into your website so thanks